If you've watched YouTube for longer than five minutes, then you probably know what Raid Shadow Legends is. That has absolutely nothing to do with this video, I just kind of wanted to point that out. But if you know what Raid Shadow Legends is, you probably also know what Raycon is. Now, Raycons has been a hot topic since 2019, mostly because of their marketing strategy of sponsoring YouTubers and having the ads on YouTube and you don't really hear about them anywhere else. But all the YouTubers are saying how great they are for being half the cost of all the premium brands, despite the fact they're actually close to a third of the cost of the premium brands nowadays, but that's kind of... Hmm. Sorry Raycon, but I'm doing your marketing for you. But I wanted to see if they're really all that. Do they actually stack up against the premium brands? And for that, I have the Sony. Wow, you can't see who that is from that angle. What I actually have here are the Sony WF-1000 XM4s. Catchy name, aren't they? And the AirPod Pros. So today we're really going to be putting a hard light on Raycons to see how well they actually stack up against the $300 pair and the $250 pair, but is now currently about a $200 pair. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is compare the cases, because, you know, why not? Okay, there's actually a reason why I want to talk about the cases, because these are like the homes of the earbuds. Their lifespan is dependent entirely on the case. So naturally, it would only make sense if the case is good. <laughs> and comparing them to the premium point out is the size of the case. Now in all the advertising, they talk about how great and pocketable and easy it is to carry around with you. Uh, kinda, not really. Now, while Raycon does claim that they're really nice, small, and pocketable, which is kinda true, they are small, they're not very pocketable because they're really thick. Like they're really, like if you compare it to how thin the AirPod Pro case is, it doesn't really slip into your pocket all that well. And while the Sony WF-1000 XM4s, I'm gonna be calling them a full name this entire time, deal with it. While the Sonys look a lot larger from the top on viewpoint, they are a, quite a bit, well not quite a bit, they are a little bit more flat than the Raycons, so these are a bit more pocketable than the Raycons, and the AirPod Pros are definitely more pocketable than them. And for the quality of the actual case itself, it's actually like really cheap feeling. This is like, a really low quality matte plastic. Um, the lid is just kind of atrocious. Like it takes no effort to open it up at all. Uh, if you're like walking along like the city street or something and you drop these, there's a good chance you might not have them anymore because the magnets are kind of weak. If you just kind of like, see, like that was very little effort and they just kind of like flew right out there. Uh, so that's something that I'm very worried about these. However, with the AirPod Pros, it has a specialized hinge to prevent opening when it's dropped. And the magnets are not, they're, all, they're not very good either, but because of the stem goes inside the case like that, it makes them a lot harder to fly out than the Raycons. While with the Sonys, the magnets on this thing is like so strong. Like you can just hear the way it just kind of, and then the magnets on these are like the strongest magnets on any pair of true wireless earbuds. These are the earbuds that don't, that fly the least. So while for ease of use, the AirPod Pros have the best case, the actual build and sustainability of the Sony's is probably the one I like the most, while the Raycons is the worst in both of those departments. Now enough about the case, let's talk about the actual sound. When you take them out and you put them in your ear, you notice that they're really comfortable. What the fuck? Okay, so something really strange about these earbuds is that uh, they play a little jingle when you first put them in. Like a lot of these earbuds have like voice prompts or some kind of noise to let you know if they're on or connected. This one literally has like a little jingle that goes Raycon. And it's really off-putting the first time you put that in, but I guess it's not the worst thing. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, these are really comfortable and like they are, they do have a really, Sorry, I just did it again. They do have a very hard to see low profile styling and I do like that a lot, but for how they actually sound, okay, shut up. But for how they actually sound, um, how do I put this lightly? These are one of the worst sounding earbuds I've ever tried in my entire life. And that's not an exaggeration. I genuinely don't know where to start describing the sound profiles of these because of how bad <laughs> the Raycons are, but I'll try anyways. So I do know that in 2019, a lot of tech reviewers complained about how bassy the Raycons have been in the past. And while they definitely don't have that much bass anymore, 
what they have now is actually significantly worse, and that's a trouble that's so... Okay, I'm actually getting a little bit ahead of myself. There are three sections in the sonic profile of a headphone, and that's the bass, the mids, and the treble. You probably know what bass is, because you know Sony has the extra bass. Everyone's like, ooh, I like the bass. I like when it, yeah. So you know what a bass is. Treble is the opposite end of that, and that's what makes it like sparkly. That's like, gives it like the aggressiveness. So a lot of people like a V-shaped headphone, because it has a lot of bass and a lot of treble. Now with the mids, the mids are probably one of the most important sections of a sound profile or frequency response because that's where like all of the detail and instruments and vocals live. So if you have too much bass, all of the music is going to sound really muffly and muddy. While if you have too much treble, it's going to sound really sharp and kind of just painful to listen to. And Raycon does both of those things at the same time. It sounds like super woofy and undetailed and compressed because of the bass, with how much bass there is, but the treble is so sharp that it physically hurts to listen to. It's weird because it has both the negative consequences of too much bass and too much treble without the positives of either. Because the bass on the Raycons don't extend deep enough to have that nice rumble to it, and the bass makes it so that it's undetailed, yet the details that are there are super piercing because of the treble. Like, it's bad. <laughs> and to properly compare it to the AirPod Pros and the Sonys, the AirPod Pros are what I like to describe as neutral, is basically how the tracks in your music was recorded. It's not perfectly neutral, it has a little bit of that V-shape sound, but it sounds nice. It's not nice and pleasant. Um, it has something called soundstage. It's not very much because it, you know it's something that goes into your ear. But what soundstage is is that 3D effect that you get to when you listen to a good pair of headphones. But with these, it's like left, right, like right here, like in your head. It's not very good for that. While for these, like there's a little bit. It goes a little bit outside of your head. Just a small bit, but it's enough to make the music sound more natural. While with the Sonys, these are what we describe as a warm sounding headphone. They are neutral leaning, but they have a lot more sub bass and mid bass that just makes it sound a little bit more lush. And unlike these two, these actually have an EQ in their app where you can change how they sound to your liking. So you can make them very nice and V-shaped if that's what you're into, but you can also make them sound like a professional quality headphone. So that's why these are my favorite because I can get these to sound exactly how I want them to sound. But you might be thinking, hey, I'm being a bit too harsh on these headphones because, you know, these are $80 while these are $280 and this is $200. So I'm not exactly comparing apples to apples here. So, you know what? You're right. I shouldn't be comparing them to the premium thing, quality headphones. Well, other than the fact that Raycon just outright states that they sound as good as the premium headphones, you know what? You're right. And you know what? You're right. This isn't a very fair comparison, even though the marketing does say that they sound as good as the premium headphones. So I guess the only thing to do is, uh... Soundcore Live P2 Mini JLab Air Pop Go. What, wait, what, what are these called? JLab Go Air Pop, weird name. You're probably wondering how much these two cost compared to these. Well, to really prove my point about how low quality these are, uh, these are $40 and these are $20. Yeah. I actually don't have these here with me today because uh, I bought them for my little brother. So you just, I, but I have used them and I have some photos of them. Uh, just take my word for it. And the main reason why I chose these, other than the fact that these are half and a quarter of the cost of the Raycons, you can buy four of these for the cost of one of these. They have all the same features, with the exception of the Raycons being waterproof. Uh, these are just water resistant. Other than that, these have the three EQ modes. These have a roughly around the same battery life. Everything that you could have bragged about in the Raycons are in these for half and a quarter of the price. You need to keep that in mind. Starting off with the case, um, you might notice that this might look a little familiar. The word blatant comes to mind. Tripart dank pods. Yeah, they just straight up yeeted the design of the AirPods Pro case. But that's a really good idea, honestly, because these fit really well in the pocket. And but these also don't have the same strength of the strong hinge. Uh, these also have really weak magnets, so you know if you drop these, these are gonna run. Uh, unfortunate, but you know, 20 bucks. Yeah, this charging case has its own cable, while. 
that might be a hit or miss for some people because, uh, you know, the Raycons are USB Type-C, Sony's are USB Type-C, Soundcore's USB Type-C. Uh, these are Lightning, fuck you, Apple. But the attached cable is a lot more convenient than, say, having to bring around a micro USB cable uh, in today's day and age. And at this price point, that's just kind of a sacrifice you have to make. And honestly, it is kind of nice not to have to worry about bringing a cable with me, you know, everywhere. And because the battery life is so long, you're really not gonna be worrying about it that much. And since I don't have the case here, uh, you're just gonna have to go off the pictures I took comparing the JLab Air and Apple AirPods with the Life P2 Minis. I always forget the name. I'm just gonna call them the P2s. While they're definitely not quite as nice and thin as the AirPods and the JLabs, they are almost as small and thin, but they feel a lot more premium than these, because this is a very, very like cheap plastic. It, these do not feel good or expensive at all. It's solid enough for 20 bucks, but paying that extra cash for the uh, Life P2 Minis makes them feel almost premium. Definitely a lot better than how the Raycon case feels. Now for the actual sound quality, these destroy Raycons. It's not even close. Like even that J-Labs sound way better than the Raycons. And I will just compare how these sound by EQ by EQ. So for the standard EQ on all of these, the Raycons, as I told you, sound awful. Like genuinely, like absolutely, Terrible. The Saki EQ on the Live P2 Minis don't sound very good, but it's a lot better than the Raycons. It has some of the same issues that I do have with the Raycons, especially with the upper treble, but it's not nearly as piercing as the Raycons are. And out of these three, the best stock EQ is the JLab Air Goes. Uh, these sound really similar to the Apple EarPods, not the, uh, you know, the Bluetooth ones, like the wired ones. Um, these sound really close to that. These aren't quite as open sounding as they are, but they have better bass extension and be better treble extension while being Bluetooth and being cheaper aftermarket. All of three of them also have a bass up EQ. And the bass up on the Raycons is actually the best sounding because even though it's unbelievably woofy and muddy and undetailed, it doesn't have the problem with the upper treble. It doesn't physically hurt to hear these anymore. Like the stock EQ and the next EQ that I'm gonna talk about is so bad that I get sibilance on Bs. It only happened the one time, but the fact it happened at all is kind of unbelievable. And for those who don't know what sibilance is, basically it's when you make the S sound and your headphones make it sound so sharp and piercing that it hurts, bitch. So if you're listening to this video with Raycons right now, that would have hurt you. But after that, the next best one is the JLab Air Go. And honestly, it's the worst sounding uh, EQ setting on the JLabs because it takes away so much of the detail and some of the air that it does have and just replaces it with boomy, 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 everything's boomy all the time. But it's okay. Like I've heard worse because the Raycons are right here. I've heard worse. And it's, if you like big, bouncy bass without any other, re just without any other care in the world, then these will do it for you. While the best bass mode is the Life P2 Minis and the bass mode on this is unbelievably good because how they have this tuned is that the sub bass is like really extended. It sounds like you have like a mini subwoofer in your ears while keeping the mids relatively clean. Well, not clean, it keeps them nice and warm. So it doesn't muddy it up too much, but it makes it all the vocals sound like nice smoothie, smoothie. Makes the vocals sound nice and smooth, creamy, just kind of gives it a nice little oomph while keeping the treble, while keeping the treble neutral. And that just makes it sound really nice. Like I genuinely love the bass mode on this, which is saying a lot, cause I'm not a bass guy. Uh, I have a little rack of headphones over there and they're all studio headphones. And in fact, my favorite travel headphones are the Bose QC45s because these are tuned to be natural. They are a little bit hot on top, a little bit too much high-end trouble for my tastes, but other than that, these sound spectacular. Significantly better than the Sonys. When I say Sonys, I mean the WH-1000XM4s, not the WF-1000XM4s. Now for the last EQ setting, that's the balanced mode. Basically, it's trying to make it sound as neutral as possible. And I'm just gonna go from the best to worst this time. And the best one is, of course, the Life P2 Minis. You know, spend twice the amount, you know, you get a little bit better sound quality. Most of the time. <laughs> so yeah, these definitely do sound the best out of all of them for the balanced EQ mode. Uh, these just sound neutral. Not very neutral. It's still a little bit energetic in the top end. And the, well, 
in the low treble, not the high treble. It's a little bit energetic there. The mids are a little bit smooth from a slight mid bass bump, but they sound great. They sound really good for the price. And if you have 40 bucks, you need to get these. The next best one is the JLab Air Pop Go words, bitch. Uh, <laughs> I could have just, whoo! Whoops. Oh. But yeah, these basically just sound nice. Uh, it's nice, pleasant, light. If these were the last headphones I ever had, they're decent enough I can live with. So basically the balance mode just sounds pleasant. It doesn't quite have that bass punch. It doesn't quite have that nice sparkle, but it's nice, it's pleasant. I can live with this. I like it. For 20 bucks, for me saying that I like it and I can live with it, screams volumes because my, my favorite headphones are like $300, $200 headphones. And while, yeah, for audiophiles, that's like play money. That's, you know, headphones go as high as like $3,000 or $5,000 in the case of, what was it, the Imperium Elites? Um, but, you know, from my personal viewpoint with how much I spend on headphones, I'm genuinely happy with these and I could live with these as my only earbuds. That's pretty high praise in my opinion. Now, I'm a little hesitant to cover how they sound on the Raycons, the balanced sound. Because it's genuinely one of the most painful, aggressive, and unpleasant sounds I have ever heard. Like even worse than the stock EQ. Because what it does is that it fixes the problem with the bass. It's no longer woofy. The mids are nice and neutral. It sounds clear, but the treble gets such an unbearable boost. The first time I put them on the pure sound mode, I threw them off my head because of how much it hurt. I'm baffled that people can stand by this. Like genuinely, like sure, one EQ mode isn't painful, but the treble on this, in my opinion, is so bad that if you listen to it long-term, it will give you tendonitis, even at lower volumes. I don't want to villainize people who advertise for Raycon because a lot of these people just get earbuds that they know they work and they're like, hey, they work, they're cheap for all I know. Um, so yeah, sure, why not? And you know, it's for a lot of people that's enough and you know what, that's fine, I understand it, people are just trying to make a living. But some of these people, I'm not going to name names, Bionic Pig, work in the music field. They have high grade audio products. They know what good audio and bad audio is and yet they still choose to peddle this shit. And okay, and I definitely want to make sure that you guys know that I don't want anyone to harass people who do Raycon uh, videos and sponsorships. It's just, I don't understand how some people can just justify this to themselves. But, okay, let's try to find some silver lining to Raycons. Uh, I mentioned earlier that they're super comfortable, like one of the most comfortable, it, it did the Raycon thing again. A well, super comfortable, like you can sleep in these. And you know what, dedicated sleeping earbuds go for like 150, like $300. Like you have to spend a lot of money to get dedicated sleeping earbuds because it's hard to get all the guts of a headphone, of a Bluetooth headphone and a package so small. So, you know, for 80 bucks, that's a lot cheaper than 150 and uh, $300 for dedicated sleeping earbuds. So for that, these are actually pretty good. So if you do have these, you know, there's still a point to using Raycons. But if you wanna buy a new headphone for 80 bucks. They're already outclassed. These are the earphone free pros and these go for 80 bucks. The new version is also 80 bucks. So get those. And these, as you can see, are also tiny. Uh, how does it, how well does this pick up? But these are almost the exact same size as these. These are a tiny bit thicker, but it's fine. In fact, they even have a fin to make sure that they fit in your ear better. For 80 bucks, these are the better sleeping headphone, especially if you get the new version, which the new version at the exact same cost of $80 has better active noise cancellation and transparency mode. To give you an idea of how good that is, you don't usually get that until like you're like $150 and up. For 80 bucks, these have a really good active noise cancellation and a really good transparency mode. And for sleeping, active noise cancellation is amazing. Like, 
If you live in a loud area and you just want to sleep without having to have all these noises, if you have like all these trucks going by, these will take away the engine noise of trucks on a highway or, you know, stuff like that. And then when you actually turn on the music, these still s completely destroy these. Because what the these have a nice smooth sound. It does have an elevated bass, but not so much that it ruins the mids. In fact, it makes the mids sound better. It brings back the treble a little bit, pushes up the bass a little bit, and makes it just nice and relaxing. And that's exactly what you want in a pair of sleeping headphones. So that, coupled with the really good active noise cancellation, these are going to just annihilate these in every single way, all the time, every day. I wish I could leave it on a more positive note. So instead, I'm just gonna nitpick. <laughs> yay, 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 I've been waiting all video to do this. So something that really makes me upset about Raycons, like honestly more than even the YouTubers promoting this, what upsets me more is how they try to sell you on a product you've already bought. They do this through the packaging. Do you see how much larger, like do you see how much larger the packaging of the Raycons are compared to all of these? Like it's insane. Like. I'll go with the cheapest, J-Labs. Tiny, tiny baby, baby man, baby man. These are tiny, less than half. They're about two thirds the height. They're one fourth the length, and then they're half the width. So, wicked tiny. Anchor, or sound cord, my bad. It's, a, it's the same width, but it's half the height. AirPods, same width, half the height. Sony's, same width, a third of the height, and a little bit taller. So roughly around a little bit under half the amount of packaging. And the Sony's is fully recyclable. Like this is one of my favorite packaging setups ever because the way this is, it's made to be biodegradable. So that way, if, even if you toss it out, it'll be fine for the environment. Good move, Sony. While the Raycon has so much just space not used. The earbuds come with this, then you get like, you know, your ear tips, your uh, whatever the hell. <laughs> and then in here you get the booklets and stickers and like, this is like this one booklet is significant, is more than all four of these combined. The booklet in this one uses up more paper than all of these. <laughs> Like you can see, it's like trying to sell you on this product, amazing technologies for your everyday activities. Like it's so bright. It's like ha it's listing everything over and over and over again. Like on the back, on the front, in the manual, it lists all the stuff again. It's trying to push the fact that you bought these and it's trying to make you feel good about the fact that you bought these. It wants to make customers justify their purchase easier. And another thing that pisses, oh, whoops, and another thing that pisses me off, and the real reason why the Raycons are so expensive, it isn't because of all the technology that's in here. It's not because they spent so much time making a headphone. It's because they're paying for celebrities to use them. That's what it is. Like if you go on the website, it has like Snoop Dogg, uh, I can't think of everyone else. <laughs> but it has like so many of these celebrities like using them and wearing them for their marketing that costs money marketing. And they're using all of this money on YouTube sponsorships constantly on the ads on YouTube. That's where all the money from this goes into. It's not into the headphones, it's into the sponsorships and the marketing and the advertising. That's what you're actually paying for when you buy Raycons. I don't like that. <laughs> When you can get so much better for a fraction, for half of the cost, and significantly better at the same cost, why even bother? Genuinely, why bother? My throat's super dry. <laughs> <clears> throat> I'm gonna level with you guys. I'm a business owner, right? Uh, I've been a COO of a company before, and I'm starting up my new company now. And, and I pride myself on being customer friendly. Uh, I want to help the consumers, not trick them into doing something that they don't know they're doing. So that's why things like Raycon gets under my skin so much. I want people to actually save money while getting quality. I want people to actually get their money's worth. And to see a larger company just stroll in and take advantage of people like that, it's just, it gets under my skin. <laughs> it really does. And, uh, I just hope that this video can help people realize that this isn't all there is. 
there are other options. You don't need to spend $80 for quality. In fact, I might even make a whole video just, excuse, bleh, I shouldn't have drank the soda. I might just make a whole video just on headphones, real quality headphones for, like if you spend 80 bucks, you can get something really special. If you spend 40 bucks, you can get something amazing. Like significantly better than these even. Like way better than these. You just have to go with a different form factor. So maybe soon I'll make a video on something that's actually customer friendly, <laughs> basically. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for today. Uh, sorry I got a little heated at the end and it wasn't so fun and giggles, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Um, if you guys liked what you saw today, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I should go.